Hi, I'm David Plaza, the Opinion and Engagement Director for the Tennessean and the USA Today Network Tennessee. This is part of a series of videos that we're doing with candidates for mayor for Nashville, Davidson County. Today we have the pleasure of having Senator Jeff Yarbrough here with us. Senator Yarbrough, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Dave. Glad to be here. Thank you. So tell us for the audience, why are you running for mayor? Look, I think that our city is in a high stakes moment where we have to choose what kind of future we're going to have as a city. I, right now, it can feel like growth is happening to us rather than for us. And unless we actually get the infrastructure, housing, and services to keep up with the growth and development that we're seeing in the city, I think that people are going to continue to experience some frustration with how that's uh, with what it's like to live here. I think people don't mind being a growing city as long as we're going to make sure that it's still a great place for our kids to grow up and a safe and affordable place for our grandparents to grow old. I also think that we're dealing with a huge challenge on all of those priorities of navigating an increasingly fraught relationship between the city and the state. Almost not, you can't make progress on almost any of our challenges unless you are trying to navigate the state government. Uh, most of the potholes that people complain about and think of as city business, those are oftentimes on state roads. So even doing these things that are oftentimes you know, core municipal functions really requires someone who can navigate both city and state government. Now in the Tennessee questionnaire, you talked about your top priorities being public education, public safety, and livability slash quality of life. Could you go into those a little bit about what you mean and what your plan is? Sure. I mean, I think that my goal as mayor is to make Nashville work and work for all of us. And I think that means keeping people safe. I think it means educating our children. And I think it means how you deal with growth so that we're maximizing quality of life without uh, without maximizing cost of living. <laughs> because right now it's increasingly hard and increasingly expensive to live in Nashville. And so I think that uh, that addressing some of those key growth issues is, a, is the most urgent challenge we face. When I talk to people across the city, regardless of how it comes up, like growth is always at the at the, at the core of what I'm getting asked about. Uh, you know, I met a woman from Madison who said, like, I just want to be able to go for a walk without having to drive somewhere first. You know, I talked to someone who just wants to be, be able to afford to live here on a teacher's salary but can't afford to do it. So I think we've got to deal with those issues. But the other two priorities are things that usually are always critical functions for our city. If we get everything else right, but don't make people feel safe in their communities and safe when they drop their kids off at school, it doesn't matter that you get everything else right. So the mayor has to make safety a priority all the time. And in the long term, let's be clear, the most important thing that Nashville does for me and my wife, Tyler, is provide a high quality education for our two children, Jack and Kate, who are both in Metro Nashville Public Schools. And I think that's true for a lot of families. And so those three components, I think, are what the next mayor has to get right. Now, you've been a lawmaker in the Tennessee General Assembly for nine years. Can you talk about the things that you're proudest of and how they're contributing to how you would be an effective mayor for the city? Uh, sure. I mean, I think that my chief priority as a legislator has been to play defense for the city of Nashville and to advance the city's priorities. And so if you look at the work that I started doing shortly after getting elected, it was largely to provide this city with the tools necessary to solve some of these giant problems that we're facing. So some of the first piece of legislation I passed were creating the tools to invest in affordable housing or to invest in transit, both at the local level and in the regional level. Uh, more recently, have created a uh, past legislation around child care access and affordability. And these are all issues that are brought to me by people in Nashville as driving concerns, but we're not seeing those tools being used and certainly not being used ambitiously enough to deal with the, with the problems that we face. 
And so I view this as very much an extension of the work that I've been doing serving the city on the exact same issues and largely with the same coalitions that I've been working with, but trying to really drive us to the next level of actually solving some of these problems. I think that at the end of the day, we have been doing short-term thinking for long enough and we've got to start actually investing in the strategies that are going to direct whether this city is going to intentionally grow or just be a sprawling mess. One of the last times I saw you was at uh, the event to commemorate the victims of the Covenant shooting. Uh, this was at Public Square and we're recording this now on June 13th. And I mention it is because there's been thousands of protesters from Nashville, Middle Tennessee coming to the state legislature asking for something and there's going to be a special session on August 21st. Can you tell me about what it is, what is it that you want to see happen and what do you think it can happen and, and, and should? Well, I mean, David, that has been a driving concern of mine, frankly, for years, is trying to work towards common sense gun laws. The day of the Covenant school shooting, there was actually a story in the newspaper, in the, in the New York Times, about legislation that Caleb Hemmer and I were bringing to deal with safe storage laws. So, I mean, this is not a fight that I'm new to. And, but since uh, the Covenant shooting, which was a shock to the conscience of everyone who has a conscience, I think we have tried to double down those efforts and really try to find common ground and bridge divisions. Uh, you know, I stay in regular contact with the administration, going to be meeting with both the governor and some Republican lawmakers this week to see if we can find an agenda that gets us towards some common sense grounds. Now, what I think that should be is probably broader and more ambitious than what it will be. I mean, it should extend to universal background checks, safe storage laws, probably not having this, you know, unrestricted, constant, you know, carry law, and uh, and also doing something that is the extreme risk protection order, sometimes referred to as red flag laws, to make sure that we're keeping hand firearms out of the hands of people that we know to be dangerous. I think that hopefully we'll find progress on at least one of those issues. I would like to see progress on more of them. And I think there's going to, whatever happens, there's going to be a lot of work left to do. And the next mayor cannot wait on either the federal government or the state government to solve this problem in order to keep people in Nashville safe. Uh, we've got to be using the laws we have better, making sure that we're enforcing them, making sure that we're not letting uh, felons and uh, those who commit domestic violence be carrying firearms, that we're not, that we're cracking down on the theft of firearms from cars, which led to the shooting of a Metro police officer recently, and doing the work in our schools, both on the security side, but also on providing mental health care and treatments so that we're we're just genuinely making an investment in our long-term safety. Well, thank you. You know, we talk a lot about the city-state relationship, and it's not just about Nashville. Recently, there was a story about legislators asking Rutherford Mayor uh, Carr not to raise property taxes, saying that there was enough money there. That essentially seems like inserting oneself into those local affairs. What should be that relationship? What is a balanced relationship between a city or a county and the state? Well, I mean, there's a way that uh, a the long tradition of respecting local control is blending into now just controlling the locals. And I'm glad you mentioned the Rutherford County example because one of the things that the next mayor should be doing strategically is forming alliances within the region and across the state to ensure that the state-city relationship overall is in a much more sound place than the the state is, is respecting the authority of local governments more. Uh, but fundamentally, we have to make this relationship make more, get into a better place between Nashville and the state because it's, in, it's inconsistent with both parties' long-term interests for it to be like it is right now. I told somebody it's like getting in a fight with your spouse and burning down the garage to get even. Like, it might make you feel better for a second, but at the end of the day, it hurts you. And it, both, both the state and the city are going to be hurt if Nashville is being punished by the state. 
and if the city and state are in constant forms of recrimination. The next mayor has to stand up for the city, has to stand up for our interests, our values, our people, whenever they are under assault. But you also have to be looking for the opportunities to form alliances, to bridge divisions. And there's no one in this race and almost no one in the city who has as much experience doing either of those things as I do. I mean, I have been the city's defender whenever these things have happened. Like, we're going to have a runoff in this election because I killed that legislation this year. We were going to elect 40 council members in August because I worked every day with Metro Legal to make sure that we were having the right legislative strategy to, to prevail in that, in that work through our work with the legislature. And we have to be, you know, so I've done that, but I've also found ways to work across the aisle to pass over 80 pieces of legislation on the things that matter most to Nashville. So people in Nashville knew that downtown was getting out of control, but we, uh, so I did the work at the legislature to tax tourists downtown so that we're paying for additional safety and cleaning and to regulate the party buses. When we are, we're dealing with, uh, you know, when students at, at Hume Falk High School were, had, had a classmate that died in a pedestrian fatality, they brought legislation to uh, uh, my dear friend, Bill Beck and I, and we passed legislation to actually, you know, provide enhanced protections. That's the kind of work that I have been doing and working across the aisle to do. And the next mayor is going to have to be able to bring people together and to, to get things done. I'm sorry for the loss of Representative Beck. He was my representative um, uh, for the 51st district. He was such a, a dear man. We came into the legislature together, and there's no one that I passed more bills with. I think we passed 20 pieces of legislation together, and it's a loss for the entire community and certainly for me personally. Yeah, you know, it's interesting you talked about downtown and a lot of that touched you know, many of the legislators there. And I think about some of the successes such as, you know, 70,000 people at night going to see Taylor Swift, 90,000 people going to the Nissan Stadium for the CMA Fest, which just happened over this past weekend. You know, what are your ideas on the right balance between continuing this massive success and also keeping downtown safe and maybe opening it up a lot of families don't feel it's very safe for them, for children, for example? Right. Uh, well, so I think you've got you raised two questions, and I'll deal with the second one first because I'm a I've got two kids, and I used to enjoy taking them downtown more, and it's starting to feel like things are falling slipping away from us. And I think we have to be uh, very conscious about making sure one the downtown is actually accessible to people in the community. Uh, it's now got to be where it's too hard to get down there, too hard to park. And so it takes such a, there's a time and a dollar tax for people across the city to even be able to be part of the amenities that are happening downtown. And I think we should take that seriously. And I think we also haven't really thought through the, our city shouldn't have a one note tourism brand. We shouldn't just be, you know, party central. Like we should be about the music. We should be about families. We should be about culture and history. and have a broader view of what it, what our city's assets are, what our treasures are, and what should be celebrated by both tourists and locals alike, right? And, and, and you, the best venues are those that are enjoyed by both locals and the people from out of town. And I, I think we have to get a little bit better harmony there. The other thing is, I think that we have had, it's, it's not going to work out in the long run for us to have this are you for downtown or are you for the county? Like, we have a big city. Like, we have to be able to walk and chew gum here at the same time. We know there's going to be growth and investment downtown, but that shouldn't stop us from remembering that this is a big county, that people in Hermitage and Bellevue and Goodlitzville and Donaldson and Cane Ridge and Whites Creek and Bordeaux and, <laughs> and all across our county, they want to see that the government is looking out for them too. And I think that we have to be much more intentional about how we're building community and supporting communities in each of our, you know, throughout the entirety of Davidson County, and then providing the connectivity of each of those neighborhoods to one another and to our, our you know, the, the benefits that are available downtown. Before we wrap up, I always like to ask uh, the candidates a little bit about uh, what are the places they recommend for tourists if they have a short time here in Nashville? What would you, where would you direct them to? 
Well, so I, I mean, I usually, you, you can't come to Music City without seeing music. And so I, if there's a show at the Ryman, there's no better music venue on planet Earth. And so I think that I, I usually send people there. If there's not a show, I send them to the Station Inn in the Gulch, which is uh, a center block building, but a place where you will hear great bluegrass. Uh, I think people should get out of the, you know, get into some of our green spaces. They usually send people to Centennial Park. Uh, and I also am a big believer in the food. And so going to eat uh, hot chicken or hot fish at Bolton's or Prince's, one of the originals, is a, is, a, is a key part. And I think we really do have to remember, I think what, what Nashvilleians don't want to lose as we grow is what makes us us. And I don't think we want to lose the spirit that's taken us to this spot. You know, in the 60s when every other town in the South was doubling down on segregation, we followed John Lewis and Diane Nash down a different path. In the 70s, like the whole world was making fun of us as the town of Hee Haw, but we knew that uh, Dolly Parton and Minnie Pearl and Charlie Pride were American treasures and built this brand of, of Music City that goes everywhere from Jack White's record shop to the TSU aristocrat band that's at the White House as we sit here today performing. And in the 80s, you could fire a cannon down Broadway without hitting anything. But we invested in ourselves, we believed in ourselves, and we solved that set of problems. So I think there's too much doom and gloom in our current debate, and in this mayoral forums, by the way, because that's not the city I recognize. This is a city that believes in itself, that is clear-eyed about the problems we face, and it steps up to the plate and solves those problems, and it's time that we start doing it again. Thank you very much, uh, Senator Jeff Yarbrough, candidate for Nashville Davidson County Mayor for the viewers. Uh, July 5th is the voter registration deadline. The start of early voting is July 14th, and the election is August 3rd. Uh, keep up on Tennessean.com. Learn about the candidates through their questionnaires. And again, best of success to you, Senator. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Appreciate it.